Hello everyone, welcome back to our uh, Code Java training day two. Thank you so much for being here. This is Karthik from IT Learn. Let's continue with uh, where we stopped last time. I'm going to quickly go to our drive, and um, in that we built a folder, and that folder will help us to store all our files, code, share it with each of you. Any documentation that we do will also be uh, put in here. Now we do have the day one notes still untitled. I'm going to change that right now by getting it down they were notes okay so uh, we went more of a theory as a concept and how we have to learn java a lot of hands-on practice is mandatory uh, spoon feeding you know is something that will be challenging if you get used to in a programming world at the beginning i'm going to really help you to get the concepts fundamentals and we would be there to support technically but a lot of times self-discovery is critical so please continue to focus on that uh, that is one area you should be very, very strongly conscious of. We spoke about all the installations uh, that are required for you to do. Um, I've also put the links for the same so you can look at them. And thankfully, all the tools that we're using is open source, so you don't have to worry about the licensing in that. And um, what we did primarily is um, in our first program, we went about uh, launching Eclipse and starting to play with it. So I just started Eclipse and it asks me if I want to change the workspace. It shows me all the workspace that I have. I'm going to stick with a June Java training. I'm going to check this so it does not ask the same again. It will go straight away to June Java training under which we'll continue to add all our JavaScripts. Uh, team, is it too noisy at my end? If so, just let me know and give me a minute, please. Sorry, team. I think it should get better soon. Uh, so I let Eclipse load, and um, we were looking at parts of a Java code. The ones can't be executed, like comments and empty lines. And we seen the executable code. We saw a few keywords. We didn't make any sense of it yet, uh, but we saw that okay, there are a few keywords standard. We kind of assumed it, and we went about around, um, you know, beyond it. User written code names, etc. Uh, that's something we were looking at as well. Uh, but we will come to a lot of those, especially variables, uh, data types, objects, oops, um, a little bit in depth towards the later part. Sorry, team. Had to have a quick. Uh... Team, just hold on for one second. I'm trying to get my audio better. Uh, let's continue. The other thing that we really saw is this blocks of code. And what we should realize in Java is this curl braces mean a lot to us. So wherever you see an open curl brace, assume that a block is starting a new set of code. And an end of that related curl brace is the one which is saying that it is the end of it for us. All right. And we'll come to a lot more things on how we want to do it. Um, and what we basically have done, let's take a look in our Eclipse right now. I'm gonna minimize this, close the welcome screen and look at the code. So I have two projects, sample project one, under that source, I have a package and then this. Then I have another sample project I think we just created. Now, the two programs are out here. I'm going to close them so we have a clean screen to begin with. Minimize it a little bit, you know, get ourselves set. Now, let's look at all our programs that we did. First Java program, simple, lot of comments. Um, we had only few lines, nothing in it. Second Java program, I don't think we did anything either. Third one is the one where we printed two statements. And where were those coming? In console. So is there anything displayed here at this time? No. But once I execute it by clicking on this run, which also you could go to the run under menu bar and click on this. The icons that you see here are the most frequently used options that Eclipse developers work with. <laughs> what are the other features that you will be using as you go advanced in Java development? You will notice a lot of them out here. 
we will expose ourselves to a few of them I'll, you know and if you see some features that you have challenged we can look into them as well uh, we will do a lot of coverage on debugging team and breakpoints very important you know why these are important for us to identify when we wrote the code where did the code go wrong and go back look at that from a very good perspective as to what went right or wrong all right now let's run this code at the execution it should be able to show me that okay wow this is done all right so i just got two print statements now let us talk about something very simple team that we can you know do to get our first project going and you know the first project i want to keep it extremely simple so that it is not around objects and classes but more about programming a flow so the easiest one to do is let's take a project one to be a simple mod gauge calculator all right now for a mod gauge calculator there's a lot of calculations that we do but let's talk about the project as to the requirements right any project we start with the requirements what are the requirements in this case one user enters the loan amount and the tenure which is the term okay also adds the interest rate now once we do this this is okay we can get to that and what does it give Sh must okay where did i start typing okay it did type uh, must be able to show us the equal monthly installments that is the simple requirement of this project team now to get to this project and do it a little bit more sophisticatedly i want to do a sample where we just play with numbers why numbers these out here seem to be all about numbers and calculations you need to multiply add divide i don't know what all we have to do i don't even have a formula yet for it where is the formula for emi calculation oh no problem i'll search on google and we'll find it okay so we'll come to it um let us see should we search now and see formula formula for emi calculation oh wow that's a big formula <laughs> let's see where p stands for loan amount or principal r is the interest rate per month the interest rate per annum is 11 percent the interest rate will be 11 by 12 oh wow um and n is the number of monthly installments okay that's the tenure not bad at least we'll copy it the whole thing put it for our reference but that seems to be the formula looks tough right for us to achieve this no it shouldn't be the whole point will be this is a big project but let's start sample with play with some numbers this is something we call as prototypes or pilot just to play around and see how it goes where do we start let us do one thing let us create a new project and we'll call it as simple math calculator what is it that i want to do simple i'll create a test or sorry i'll create a script which will um, add two numbers that's all i want to do so i'm going to go to source and under source i'm going to add new class okay i don't need to add any package team if you notice so i'm going to keep it very lean you'll see the code becoming more and more simple name is add numbers that is my class i need my void main inherited abstract methods whatever keep it finish and i have the new one see unlike the earlier ones it does not now start with package why 
because it is under default package which is nothing but being under source itself there's nothing called as a default package so it is like empty so there's no need for adding a new package not a great way to do it but it is okay your code is simple to look at and that is very important i'm going to delete the one comment that is there and put it um, just blank code now in this whole thing team <clears throat> notice one thing please the name of your java class and this class here is the same so if i change this to let us say add my numbers and finish it will reflect the same change out here okay and this is the name of the main class the same name of the file and this class are the same so it's the main class in this java program under the main class you have a main method all right so couple of things main class in a java program is the name of the uh, dot java file saved of the saved of the java, of the dot java file okay within the main class whatever be the you have a main method a method is nothing but a function or an action we will come to it a little later team but what you have to understand without these two things you can't do anything all right so this is your base now whatever you do will typically be in this four ID gives you some great features if you have a block of code you can just you know minimize it you don't have to worry now here is what I'm going to do team first the purpose of this code I'm just going to write it as a comment add two numbers that's it so how do I add two numbers first I'm going to put a print statement <clears throat> and say print out adding two numbers just print now I save this and I run it what is it that you expect to see when we run this this is your console with your old results you don't want it you can clear them by removing I mean clearing it here okay now you can also close your old programs so that it your focus is very nicely on that your projects also are this minimized okay and I'm at the script now when I run it I should get this I don't think there'll be any defects in this simple program and I got the output beautiful this program will end somewhere right end of the program I'll say so main code will all be inside here so I'll just say another print statement towards the end I'll say completed all right how about making it a little bit more designer so it looks nice completed so you take a little effort and time and making it aesthetically nice also because it is all about presentation at the end team and i'll just say that we started here so whatever we code whatever the code we write in between will get surrounded by these two print statements so when i see this i know that hey started will be here completed will be here and somewhere in between will be the entire uh, other things that will happen okay so far so good whatever we learned we have written we have done the same thing uh, we created a new java project we added a class and we wrote a couple of statements now i want to add two numbers how do i add two numbers very simple one way is that i say so and just say to what will happen and can i just say two plus three for example i don't know if i can yeah looks like i don't know if it is sensible code but seems to be working i could add maybe hopefully so so whenever i run right it, by default i have to save it and then launch it so i check this box here which says i will automatically save everything before the launch so it will do it every time so within that print statement itself i could have add, i added two numbers 
but the way we will do it within our uh, java program is assign them to some storage units for a specific reason so that we can reuse them and that is the first and most important concept in programming team that's your variables variables are nothing but simple storage holders assume this okay there is a human where is the color highlighted okay oh my highlighter is not working is all drawings highlighter is not working oh it's working here we try here now no it's not working here <laughs> Let me do it here. What was I trying to say? Um, we're talking about variables. Yes, very simple thing. Now, when you look at a human, right? And maybe we can take this human in the reference. Every human has specific information, like what they have name, right? They have maybe an email address, a phone number, a address or location, and so many details that can be linked, a social security number to that specific human. Now, if we are putting so much information about it, we need to store them somewhere. Now, as humans, we store it in our memories and computers will basically save it or store it in their internal memory spaces, right? So all your computers, your smartphones, everything have the memory cards and they are used to store the information. Now, your programs, basically what they do is their main um, objective is the information that is stored they process it so information is taken that is saved and they work on it and that has become information technology so the data is the core thing in anything it is the information so your information about a person or about an event or about any company or anything is put into to understand better and work better with it that storage becomes important. While you know that you have databases like Oracle or MySQL or MongoDB, even simple ones like Microsoft Excel, or maybe even Notepad you can store, but programs make it even more attractive. So the first and foremost building blocks to be able to store something while the programs are running are called as variables. Why are they called as variables? So that they will know we note that by the definition itself of english it says it is changing why maybe the name won't change but the email scan phone number scan address scan but ideally they're all called as variables that forms the basic building block of any uh, programming language team now how does a variable look very simple a variable is nothing but a place to hold value so a specific value is put into that variable if a value is loaded here then i need to be able to retrieve it sometimes because i want to know the value i want to change the value i want to use the value i need to have a unique name for it so every variable will basically be a memory allocated in the space in your computer or program and it can be referenced and called by a name that is all it is now it could be about a human or it could be as simple as a number now how do we put this and translate them in our code very simple <laughs> this is very you know stupid way of adding two numbers because you're always going to add two and two i want this to be adding any two numbers so the first thing i need to do is let us let me take a value let us say a number 55 i need to store this somewhere i just can't write the word called 55 here okay now the way i say is i want to put it into a variable so the way i'll do it is i'll say int number one equals 55 and it's still as you write see your id is telling that there's something wrong right here it is giving you icon and even under the line uh, if i undo and i just wrote 55 is the same thing it says hey you know what i can't understand what you wrote 
right and it says the left hand side of an assignment must be a variable so i will uh, redo this and now i wrote something called int num1 equals 55 i need to end every line in java with a semicolon and there you go now what is this int num1 equals 55 what is it that it did um it has created i need to draw team so i need to go back to this painting itself it's um okay it has created a new memory space put the value 55 and gave the name num1 that's it so in this program whenever i call number one or num1 as is this value will come up i'm calling this name i will get this value how do i mean for example i want to print what is there in number one so i'm using a shortcut key on my windows keyboard for the print statement team is it it is you write syso and then just do control space it will then expand you use the system.out.println um, and now what we're going to do is my first number see so many print statements i'm putting just to make it very clear is tuck, 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 and i need to put that value if i say 55 here and i go here and i change it to 50 that won't get reflected so how do i put that value the way we do it is very simple team anything you give within double quotes becomes a string what is int i'll come to it in a minute note this team anything within a string is considered uh, anything within double quotes like this is considered as a string and what is string will come to it we're talking about variables now and in your print statement so you gave this entire thing in double quotes it will take as is okay now if i want to print the value number one here let me write num1 and see what happens now do note team java is case sensitive basically very simple uppercase lowercase you cannot mix and match if it is num1 is uppercase here then it can be uppercase anywhere if it is not it can be so but as a general advice good programmer java is case sensitive i would say a great pro good programmer forget a great one is even more case sensitive in the sense the way we name things the way we write our code will be so beautiful that maybe sometimes i may misspell s to be you know lower case and do something like that and it'll throw an error see it doesn't accept it for it a lower case is different from an upper case all right so this kind of small things is easy you'll get help from it but how do you name variables how do you write different things is your culture so do your so if you if you put num1 it has to be it cannot be uppercase that's all i'm saying let's run this code and see team do we get 55 or not so uh adding two numbers i got started num1 my first number is see that is the issue when you give anything in the code it does not think of it any other way so this is the reason now i just said num1 team when i said num1 what happens is a number is taken uh, and put into this variable called num1 whenever i want to use it call it by that name and i run it now you will see that it will come out much better there you go so the value has come now so what does it mean at any point i can change things now this statement is very important team let us talk about it very briefly okay in java data type becomes important <clears throat> why very simple rule every program on your pc requires memory 
which is your RAM, to run. Okay, every program because it has to occupy the memory because it is constantly having some data stored in that during that run. All right. Now, better apps use less memory and hence are faster and more efficient. To use less memory, we need to store store data more uh, efficiently what do we mean very simple team let's imagine you live in the downtown of a metro let's talk about manhattan now in manhattan just to get an 800 square feet you know a studio apartment will cost you maybe two three thousand dollars and you may not even get a rental space with it so they're packed so together that you know a couple is having to live in an 800 square feet place that is built because the city has to be efficient we can't luxuriously live but the same cost you could get a 5000 square feet in a remote town within the us correct within that metro when things are getting crowded everything will start getting packed the concept is very simple use memory only as needed okay but we don't know what will be contained in the uh, variable that becomes a key challenge so what they said is depending on the variable type which is nothing but the data type let us allocate memory and hence they said one of the data types int int is a java data type used to store integers what are integers in typical mathematics team are positive or negative numbers now team for some of you who don't remember certain aspects that is fine we will come to them you will know it it doesn't matter but these data types like integer string double float boolean i want you to have a decent idea on all right now that is the first data type we have seen what does it mean if i want so i'll come to this later if i want to put a value this is called i need to say int int come on <laughs> you know int yeah, it won't let me type here you know what i will do it here itself the way it is done is very simple thing first we do declare a variable then we initialize a variable then we use a variable how do we do that the three steps to it declaring a variable is very simple i say the type of the variable space the name of the variable and put a semicolon that declares the variable now why do you think there's an error here the reason being we already used num1 how can you use num1 again you can't have declared two variables with the same name so what is the alternate i will change it to two and then we initialize that number this basically says num2 can now hold integers that is what it is now initializing a variable means i can put values into it so can i put 40 sure looks like and i just initialized you're loaded the first value and then what i can do is use a variable how can i use a variable i can just print it and say this is num2 and that value should be printed now the same statement i have declared and initialized in one line in this case i've split it into two lines team that is the only difference all right everyone 
uh, when you run, well, make you run, yeah. okay so i think everything is good um, all good so far team any questions from anyone i'm going to continue with it if there any questions just pause me please now so in my program now i have two numbers first number num1 55 second number num2 40 perfect now i can write my first number numbers my first number is and here if i want to put the number one i have to say plus num1 that is how it is done so you have your text in this double quotes which is what i call a string will come to and then your variable have to be combined or concatenated or appended together using a plus symbol so we're joining it a text and a number and it is fine when you run it you will see that display see i either can just say 55 which is a guesswork first number second number or this way where it says my first number is 55 and how did we do it very simple let me repeat the same for the second number how does it look my second number so let me change this here is oh now num2 and let's run this again so this display is better for me right my first number my second number now we have two variables there are two numbers in them i don't need to print the statement so i'll comment it team anything that i don't need i basically comment them when we clean up the codes right we try and delete the old comments at that given time all right now let's see does it look neat the print very nice started my first number is my second number is completed now what is it that we wanted to do we wanted to add two numbers now when you add two numbers you will get a result so how can i show it up i can show it up as multiple ways but the easiest one would be i will say there's a number three that is equals number one plus number two the simple math statement that i put within uh, java code where i'm taking two numbers on the right side whatever i do on them they are getting added now that value will go on the left side right hand side is your formula or equation left hand side is where you store it team that is how the equations are now what could the possible issue be you have your ide you can take your mouse over and see for a suggestion what does it say number three cannot be resolved to a variable i mean when it says resolve to very variable very heavy word resolve it, it cannot identify it as to be any variable so it says create a variable or da, 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 it gives you something what you must do is think about it oh you know what i didn't define in c i unless it declare or define a variable with what data type it is i cannot initialize it or use it now i've done it now what is it that i've done i've taken the values and put it in here have i used it anywhere no do you see there's a warning sign here instead of a red cross there's a yellow exclamation in a triangle take your mouse over it will show you that the value of the local number num3 is not used okay you have created a variable you put the value in it the memory is getting lost in the program if you don't use it why do you want to put it what is the reason so then that is a warning oh you know what oh man i forgot to use it i have to print it out right and i'll say the total is and run this so did i get the right result my first number is 55 my second number is 40 the total is 40 side completed program executed but is it correct no why cause something went wrong it doesn't seem to be the right thing why a right one would have been 90 then how come 40 where is the error no error while running team but some error in the result num3 equal num1 plus num2 why do i still have it is not used oh because here i didn't change it to num3 and that is the reason understood team it is very simple for us to be able to go back and logically think the reason the error came in first place is i was fast you know i tried to step assuming that i knew it and i made a silly human error 
and these three developer human errors sometimes don't get caught now because they're so deep to get to that kind of exact story we have to do a lot of things and sometimes we don't get to test it also defects come up okay so we have to be extremely careful as developers there you go my first number is 55 my second number is 40 the total is 95 and now all i have to do is anytime change the numbers here let's say i take it to 125 and let's say 4000 and rerun this test 125 4000 4100 perfect how about 125 million and then this and run it wow see it is adding and how about 1.25 and 4.1 oops what is the problem take your mouse over it type mismatch cannot convert double from double to end okay so basically your the reason being it is just an integer you just want to have small integers and put them into it you don't want to put uh, decimals into it for that we have a separate storing separate data type and we will come to those later team the other data types that you look at are double float string array um, boolean what else is there primarily I think we will be revolving around these we have seen integer already Mm, yep something around these that's it you know what is double little larger number with decimals float is actually a very large number string is simple text array we'll see boolean is very simple it's got only true values team true or false this boolean value if i say so for example just saying as a test i say boolean uh my b1 Okay, I've defined this. Now, my B1 equals, I can't just say blah, blah, blah. Because it can only take two values, true or false, but without quotes. So true is fine. Hello. Okay, small, small true, maybe. Okay, there you go. I got scared for a second. Because <laughs> like I was saying, right, team, you keep switching between technologies and programming languages. Your syntax may not always be there with you, but it'll keep coming back. Or I can say my B1 equals false or lowercase. So the only two values it can hold is true or false. Where will we use? In condition statements. But this is just to show you. All right. Um, so team, that is how we can add two numbers. Now, how quickly can multiply two numbers? This is done. I'm going to maybe, can I save as wow? multiply my numbers dot java so i'm taking the same code and i wrote multiply my numbers dot java there seems to be an issue here do you see this red cross so what could the issue be at some line number it'll be team id is very nice it'll basically tell you where so if you keep scrolling it'll show you okay it's in line two public class add my numbers what is the problem here do you think If it is multiply my numbers here, it has to be multiply my numbers here. So while we copy paste it, or rather, rather duplicated the test class, uh, it didn't change this. So that's why the error was. Why does it still show red here? This looks to be fixed, but then sometimes it'll still show till you save them. When you save it, everything will start getting properly aligned. So multiply my numbers. This I'll say multiply two numbers and here I'll just say multiplying two numbers I'll say started number one is fine not too big I believe for multiplication just don't want to overdo it number two is fine too in first number so and so so here I'm gonna, sorry sorry team for the yawn um, I'm gonna multiply them and I'll say the multiplication total is and then let's see do I need to do anything else here it does not look like this boolean I can remove it was just to show and we run it oops error save what error is it 
sometimes eclipse fails team and we don't know why and what we do is we kind of re uh, open it but let's see huh that's a strange error i've never seen that let me see the code is correct multiply my numbers dot java main multiplying to number started there's no error like syntax error no red marks anywhere code looks okay why won't it run <laughs> oh it did i think no this is just uh, addition she console clear what has gone wrong <laughs> i don't see anything wrong with this code you know what i'm going to quickly restart eclipse and see what happens I'm restarting team eclipse so team once we do this we look at multiplication execute it and um, see how the code looks and then um, i think we'll look, break for a q and a if you have any questions okay restart eclipse it went to our default workspace i'm going to close this i have a math calculator let's look at let's close all of them so you can right click and say close all just apply open open multiply my numbers and try and run it again now it's fine see sometimes even restart may not help of your eclipse you just copy the code into a notepad take a new java class in eclipse and try it so multiplying two numbers started first time is 125 4000 result is half a million yep and there goes a simple uh, function no sorry program on multiplications i think what we have exposed to is very simple thing team how the structure is how to declare variables a little bit more discipline on you know namings and so on and as we go about it you'll know that we'll go faster and we'll keep increasing so we will stay with a slow speed for the next two to three sessions after which we will go a little bit more in the project two right we will go at depth we'll repeat almost the entire thing but we don't have to go uh, explaining everything in detail that's it from my side for now, team. Uh, we'll see you back in day three. Uh, any questions that you have, please, that I can handle meanwhile? All right, everyone does not seem to be like we have money questions today. So we'll see you back in day three then. Take care all. Bye now.